did you start writing your current your material, like your current songs? Like when when did that all start for you? Moving away from things that are just strictly uh, religious based. I mean, I wrote Fishbowl when I like started questioning my beliefs and kind of moving away from Christianity. So that was a while ago. That was probably like three or four years now. But um, the title track on the EP, um, we wrote a year ago. It was last mm-hmm. August. And that um, kind of be- became the theme of the EP, and we kind of built around that. And we also noticed with our writing, we were writing about our childhood and our shared experiences as sisters and kind of like what we have gone through like throughout adolescence. And that felt like we're, that, the last song feels like where we're at now, kind of. And so we kind of wrote around that to tell this story with the rest of this, the EP. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's been a, a year of putting these songs together, I would say. All, yeah. all of them, except for Fishbowl, were w- written within the last year. And what would yeah. you say the, the overarching theme is then? Just growing pains is what we've kind of always come back to. Um, yeah, just kind of talking about our journey growing up, um, questioning things, going through change, and moving through that. Um, not always the most gracefully, but um, coming out and on on like a, I don't know, on a positive note and a hopeful note um, for whatever will come. Accepting kind of like what you've been through and accepting yeah. who you are finally. Yeah, and processing everything as well. Yeah, because I think music for us like is really a healing thing and it allows us to process some of the things that we like didn't even realize um, that had happened to us or didn't even realize that affected us so much. Like, I think it really came out in our music and like Lily was saying, um, our songwriting... Uh, <laughs> sorry our songwriting like uh can be elevated by the fact that we have shared experiences but different perspectives on some things so uh yeah that's important for us because you guys are what a year apart from yeah, each other year right? and, a year yeah. and a half yeah yes yeah, so you're pr- almost growing up as twins pretty much yeah, yeah. i mean very very close in age people mm-hmm. call us twins all the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah so a lot of shared experiences there and that i mean that makes perfect sense um if you want me asking how because again, I, I like your, because I like your guys' songwriting in the, the the music you're putting out. But I, what I also really respect about you guys is that you've only been doing this for like a year, right? Mm-hmm. How how old are you guys? If you want me asking, I'm 21. I'm 19. Okay, so that's fucking crazy. First of all, <laughs> that's I just put that out there. That's fucking crazy. But not only are you guys putting out music and you've ingrained yourself in the music side of Albuquerque, but you guys are actually contributing to the music scene. Like you guys are holding an open mic, and mm-hmm. for people that aren't involved in anything like that it's like oh okay that's an open mic okay who gives a fuck but like that like i was strongly considering because i was trying to figure out as i got into stand-up like okay i want to do just more than just stand-up comedy like i want to add to the stand-up scene there's a lot to mm-hmm. add a lot that can be added it's so it's not new but like this new version of it I, and f- outside looking in for what i've seen for the music community as well the post-covid side of things right it's all very new things are flourishing mm-hmm. seems like new bands and new musicians are coming pretty much every month same thing with stand-ups it's like okay there's a lot to be added what can i add and for a while there i was like yeah i could i could do an open mic i could do one night a week to host an open mic and do that in the other uh no <laughs> it's, a it's a lot of work it is a lot yeah. well it's not always a lot of work it's the time that it takes mm-hmm. how long is your guys open mic for we do it six thirty. Well, we get we there, get there at like five thirty, and we don't leave till like nine thirty. Yeah, no. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no. And on top of that, we're both full time students and part time like employees. Our, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. So we, it's a lot. It's but worth it, it though. Yeah, it's worth it. It's really cool to see like the community that we've built. Um, yeah, because you guys, that's the that's the right way to go about. It. Especially at the ground level. Cause it's not like not. I don't think this is a stretch to say. It's not like you guys can, you know get people connected to like get booked at sunshine or mm-hmm. fucking launch pad or oh. l ray or like revels so i was like no we can't do that so i had the same thought process right so i can't get people booked anywhere but i could do an open mic see what that looks like mm-hmm. and eventually i turned into doing um me and my buddy aj we do shows at uh safe house now for stand-up cool so nice. we get to actually book people now for that but it's like a free show at a bar so yeah. I mean, it's not exactly a fucking club yeah but it's something <laughs> yeah exactly it's something to add right it's something to give them so what made you guys want to start an open mic and what's kept you committed to doing it and where's it at by the way this was before oh, yeah. we get into it it's so, at the albuquerque the albuquerque collective sorry <laughs> no you're okay <laughs> 
the Albuquerque Collective. Yeah. So uh, every we, Thursday, every Thursday night, sign ups are at six. And where's that at? It's off of um, Constitution and Eubank. Yeah. Perfect yeah. part of town. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> we love it. Um, but yeah, we kind of uh, started with open mics, like playing at open mics, um, writing, like playing our own music at open mics. How and many so, open mics are there aside from your guys oof, for music? Lot. For there's music, an, really? Yeah, there's Knob Hill Stage. Um, Edgar Wonder hosts Knob Hill Stage every Tuesday night. Um, there used to be one at Albuquerque Distilling that Felix um, Peralta used to host, and sometimes um, Derek Sanyoti Wild would host. Um, there's, one there's one at Ancora. There's one at Ancora. Which is also, I think they just moved it to thir- Thursday yeah, nights as well. Rosetta and Cora. And Cora is, it's on um, Copper. yeah, it's like near near Knob Hill. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot going on, but um, but yeah. I think you were saying we're we we're trying to just like provide the opportunity for more people, and I think like to be completely honest, we we love the idea of open mics, um, and the the start that they gave us but didn't always have the best experiences with them and wanted to kind of like... In what way, if you want me asking? Just the idea of the open mic, I believe, is to open, make it a place where everyone's welcome. And we weren't always seeing that. Um, And also, it's just like, it can be intimidating if there isn't, if, if, if you don't create that environment. You have to create that environment. And it's like, it's, it takes a lot of intention. Um, And so... That, there was just one day where I was kind of like, I, I should just do this. Like, I know what I would like to see in an open mic. Why not, like, create it myself? And I also used to manage the coffee shop at the collective, so I did have that connection, and that's kind of how we got our foot in the door there. So I was like, I have a place to do it. And Faye and I, like, appreciate open mics, and we just kind of wanted mm-hmm. to do it in a way that felt um, more inclusive and welcoming and that's not to like say any shade to other open mics but it does take um extra care to like create that environment what do you think goes into that for you guys anyway um well something that we do we're very good at splitting up the open mic between us um like lily works the coffee shop and she helps a lot with the um obviously the setup and the sound and then um, we both, like, reach out to people and, like, personally invite them so they feel like they're welcome to come and play their, their music. And then I have a notebook that I bring every week, and I write down every single artist, their Instagram, the shows that are coming up, if they're on streaming. And then every before every act, I always announce that and tell people about the artist before they come up, just, so, just to give them a shout-out, even if, like, nothing comes of it, um, just to, like, make it more personal and um, organized. Well... It's uh, it's cool to have like credits read for you before you mm-hmm. go up on a stage and do. Yeah, <laughs> it's cool. Like I'll, before I go up, like at the local club downtown, I'm like do you want do you want us to plug your podcast? I'm like sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. That'd be that's <laughs> that'd cool. Be awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's for cool. Sure. It's uh, and it makes pe- yeah, it makes people feel welcome. It makes them feel like they're oh, like you you guys brought this up on that episode you did, and I made it really fucking struck a nerve things. It's a interesting thing to convince yourself that you are what you are mm-hmm. right you know what i mean that yeah. it's like even because i don't i don't uh i haven't settled with being called a stand-up mm-hmm. at all that hasn't really like I'm, I'm cool with being a podcaster like i've put enough money into yeah. it put enough of my friends money into it thanks guys <laughs> uh, <laughs> um and i've been doing it for almost four years now so i'm cool with that like, I'm okay i feel like i'm okay at this i feel like people like it enough all right that's fine but like I'm, and i feel like you guys um look at musicians and artists in the same respect you hold it to such a high regard mm-hmm. so that like give yourself the same title as people that you respect so much like that's strange mm-hmm. that's weird mm-hmm. i don't know if i'm okay with that yet yeah I'm, I'm certainly not you know what i mean but yeah. then to you know before you go up or whenever you're doing these things out in public it's like yeah okay i i think i'm this now mm-hmm. yeah I think, or i think i can be this yeah, and the thing that's really awesome about having a weekly open mic is that we can see these people grow. Like, I've we've literally watched them um, go from, oh, yeah, I don't want to plug anything, oh, I don't have anything, or whatever, to being like, actually, I have a show, or actually, yeah, I'll plug my Instagram. And it's, it's super cool to, like, I don't know, just to support those people um, and to see regulars come back and then also every once in a while, like, a, a brand new person that I've never seen in the scene before. So, um, yeah. No, it's cool. And I think by doing that, you allow people to go up there and actually try their best. And I think, and, and this is not a 
because I go to open mics regularly, but this is not throwing shade at anybody, but I think what makes an open mic the most open to people and makes it the most um, inviting, I guess, is uh, giving people the space to go up there and absolutely eat shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. of course. You have to do that. You have to eat shit a little before uh, you get you, good. You, you, have to, you have to shovel it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but no, if you see, like, I mean, that was me. Like, I'm still getting, so I'm only a year into it, but like, going and seeing other people eat a dick on stage i'm like oh okay i can't be that bad yeah. right. this, this could be and then you do worse than them it's like oh, okay okay but it's <laughs> okay. okay but, yeah. but yeah. now you know how that feels yeah and it's like the nice thing you'll see the same people mm-hmm. and you're like all right let's do it let's, let's bang our head against the wall again let's yeah, see yeah. what happens mm-hmm. and you just go over and over and it's cool um i agree with you from that producing standpoint to be able to see people like oh yeah like a month ago you were like here and now you're like here. That's mm-hmm. cool. If you keep going six months from now, you could be here. Mm-hmm. And then it, and it just builds and it's like, com- it's like, I'm not a money guy, but like compound interest. It keeps going and you're investing in yourself, doing that type of thing. Um, how do you guys find yourself getting yourselves booked for shows? At least it's not a lot, really talked about a whole lot, right? Just while on the subject. Uh, how do you find yourselves getting booked for shows? Is it from advertising yourselves on social media? Is it making connections with people? Is like, where do you see yourself doing that where do you see what's most fruitful i guess i i suppose social media because we kind of get like we just get people asking if we would like to play a show um and we kind of we like to do shows that are like meaningful to us or that we feel like align kind of with like where we're at. We try not to do like a ton, a ton of shows. We try to make make them more sparse, like once a month, so we can really like hone in. And you know, we just had the EP release that was like very special. We did the um, sharing women's stories uh, through song show, which was like something at important Echoes, to us. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah so I things- wasn't able to go to that, but I saw that. That was it. Looked like it was really well put together. So yeah. congratulations! Yeah. Shout for that. out to Sandy. Yeah. Sandy. Yeah. It's a cool. It's a cool thing, you know, that we were like, oh, like if something pops out to us, not so much people just trying to get a slot filled, you know, but so- something that's kind of like has some purpose. And that's, again, no shade to like venues that are trying to just get music, but mm-hmm. um, I think we can accredit that to just like honestly social media the way that like people have supported us and um shared our music and Mm -hmm. um the connections we've made honestly networking is a open mics and shows going to shows Mm -hmm. being like visible in the community and like showing up and supporting other artists at their shows which i love like i'm obsessed with and i've been doing that um for the past two years and i was just going to to local Mm -hmm. shows like i i discovered a like love for that and now being a part of that like as a musician is like it's cool um but yeah i definitely um it's good to support people and yeah <laughs> yeah no i agree and that's that's the biggest piece of advice there's a uh, really good stand-up in town uh steph darnell super nice guy he's been doing it for like 13 14 years and one of the biggest pieces of advice he gave to me uh, about getting booked at shows he's like okay barring being talented like you have to like you have to be funny you have to be musically inclined or at least have the potential to do well in whatever craft you're doing but if you want to be on a show that's not like you know an established like I, I no matter how many times i go up to bernalillo i go to casabas i'm not gonna get booked to like that's a real comedy club they booked they book nationwide acts like you have that's like be talented to get there and get noticed and have put asses in seats. Like that's a whole other beast. Mm -hmm. But like for the local shows, if you want to get books there, go to them, Mm -hmm. show your face, Mm -hmm. show that you're willing to support and not just leech off of people and just get spots and get shows where it's like, all right, cool. Thanks guys. Bye. We're like, no, I'm going to come here. Even if you're not going to book me because I like what you guys are doing. So I want to be a part of it. I enjoy the art itself in general. So I get to go enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, just showing. And then, uh, but being visible, like if you're not, and this is an unfortunate thing, but it's the truth. If you're not regularly showing your face, whether it's social media wise, or I think it's most important in person, you know, at these local events, at these open mics, whatever it is, people are going to kind of forget about you. 